It is easy to get confused between the Arctic North Pole and Antarctica in the South Pole. The North Pole sits on an ice shelf 10,000 feet deep, whereas the South Pole has a 10,000 foot high plateau, a landmass covered by ice and snow. Admiral Byrd claims to have been the first person to reach both the North and South Poles. As a young man, he had signed up for the American Armed Forces and was soon making his way up the ranks, taking on difficult missions which earned him several honours, including the Naval Cross. Byrd was an adventurous man, and in 1926 he staked his claim to have been the first person to reach the North Pole by air, flying with Airman Floyd Bennett. It was for this that he was awarded the Medal of Honour. In 1927, Byrd took on the challenge of the first non-stop flight across the Atlantic, but crashed his plane in the practice takeoff. He went on to accomplish this trip later that year, and received the French Legion of Honour. In 1928 he sailed south to the Antarctic, taking with him a large crew and assorted equipment. He commissioned two ships to transport them and three planes he needed for the expedition, which were to be used for reconnaissance and exploration. Because of the success of this expedition, at the age of just 40, Byrd was promoted to Admiral, becoming the youngest ever in American history. Whilst in the Antarctic, he discovered a dormant volcano which was named Mount Sidley. In 1954, Byrd was a guest on the TV show Longines Chronoscope. Frank Knight was the host, and Byrd was asked several questions about his trips to the North and South Polar regions. Byrd was happy to discuss his travels, and suggested that these lands could save humanity, explaining how he believed the South Pole was important for mankind's future because it held untapped reserves of natural resources such as coal and other minerals. He talked about his trip to the Poles in the winter of 1946, where he had been sent on a special mission that was known as Operation High Jump, and he was in charge of the Antarctica Developments Project. It was in the March 5, 1947 edition of the Chilean newspaper El Mercurio that the first indication was given as to what and who he had encountered whilst there. The crew had just set up camp, and Byrd, along with some scientific companions, took a flight from their base across the South Pole. They flew 1,700 miles over the ice plateau, but then suddenly they came across a great valley which appeared green with vegetation and contained fresh blue lakes, a valley that had forests on its slopes, and various animals could be seen traversing it. No longer was it the icy expanse of Antarctica, but a summer land, a veritable paradise. Byrd described all this on his radio during the trip back to base camp. He could not figure out how this could be. Alongside the lakes he could see track lines, which Byrd said resembled blast marks. He described what he had seen to the Chilean reporter, who wrote it up for the El Mercurio newspaper, but then no more was heard about it. But because of this article, the idea came about that the South Pole was some kind of landing and takeoff site for either a lost civilization or extraterrestrial beings. Many say that Byrd had found the entrance to an inner Earth, others that he had found a vast new continent, a new land beyond the Pole. Is there an inner Earth, or a land beyond the Poles? Is the Earth bigger than we realize? Nobody really knows what the inside of our Earth is like, what it is made of, or what could be down there. Had Byrd flown into a portal to the inner Earth, it makes one wonder, is the inside of the Earth habitable? Are the Poles special doorways? There have been reports of flying saucers and fleets of UFOs coming from Antarctica and the Arctic regions for many years, and in recent times there is much discussion about the South Pole, as questions are asked as to why so many people are visiting it on official business. People from royalty to religious leaders have dropped by. It is as if they are being summoned. People such as the Russian Orthodox Patriarch Kirill, the American Secretary of State John Kerry, and astronaut Buzz Aldrin who made a mysterious tweet whilst there, which read, We are all in danger, it is evil itself. And Aldrin added a picture of what many believe is an iced over pyramid in Antarctica. Currently no aircraft or flights are allowed over either poles, but back in 1947, Byrd went on an expedition flight to the North Pole, where he was to have an extraordinary adventure, which was kept secret until his diaries were discovered. Byrd's diary was written in the months of February and March 1947, the time that he had taken his trip to the North Pole. Just as the long night of the Arctic ends, the brilliant sunshine of truth shall come forth again, and those who are of darkness shall fall in its light," wrote Byrd at the start of his diary. Then he goes on to write that he has had to do this in secret and obscurity. He gives the flight date of February 19, 1947. He is at the Arctic and flying north to the North Pole, with his radio man Howie, taking off at 0600 hours. Not long into the flight, a slight oil leak was discovered. 
They encountered some turbulence, and because of this they increased their altitude to 2,900 feet. As they flew over the frozen landscape, Bird noticed that the ice below was beginning to turn yellow. He turns the plane to investigate this, and soon the yellow turns to red, then purple. Not long after this, the onboard magnetic compass and gyro begin acting oddly, causing them to be unable to keep their heading. They have to use the sun to get their bearing. Bird reports that the plane's controls are becoming sluggish, yet there is no indication of icing to cause this. All he knows is that they are still going north. They sight mountains ahead, mountains which do not appear on the map. Bird has flown this area many times and has never seen them before. Strong turbulence hits the plane. The plane's instruments are malfunctioning. The radio connected to base camp stops working and they have to ascend to cross the mountain range. On the other side they see a green valley with a river running through it. To the port side there are forests growing on the mountainous slopes, yet they can no longer see the sun, even though it is still daylight outside, and as the plane's instruments return to normal, the thermometer reads 78 degrees Fahrenheit. They spot a hairy beast below. It is gigantic, and as they try to identify it they realise that it is a woolly mammoth. Then they see buildings in the distance, and a city appears before them. The buildings shine with a rainbow hue and appear to be made of crystal. Bird declares that all this is impossible, but both he and his radio man Howie can see it clearly. It is then that several disc-shaped craft approach, and on them are strange symbols. Bird realises that he cannot control the plane, yet it still flies. We are caught in an invisible vice grip of some type, he writes in his diary. And then his radio comes alive again, and a voice with a foreign accent welcomes them to the city of Argatha. The voice assures them that they should relax because they are in safe hands. The plane is still not under Bird's control, and it begins to descend. It is brought to land on a platform that then starts to drop away like an elevator, finally coming to a halt below ground. Bird watches in amazement as tall men with blonde hair approach the plane. They know his name and ask him to open the cargo door. He and the radio man are told to step onto a platform that has no wheels, yet moves them quickly through the city. They are taken to a building, where they are given a drink and accommodation, and after a short while, Bird is summoned to go with the escorts. The radio man is asked to wait in the room provided. Bird is taken to an elevator where he descends down to a long hall. Inside, a rose-coloured light emanates from the walls. He is led to a great door, above which is written a sign in a language that he does not recognise. The door slides open, and he is told to enter. Inside, he describes a room that is so beautiful he is lost for words. He is greeted by an elderly man, who is seated at a long table. He indicates to Bird to join him. The man explains to Bird that he has been allowed to enter this realm, because on the surface world he is a well-known man of noble character. The words surface world make Bird realise that he is underground, inside the planet, an inner part of the earth. The old man continues to explain to Bird that he is now in the domain of the Ariani, the inner world of the earth and the reason he has been brought to them is to take back a dire warning. The inner earth people are concerned that the humans living on the surface have found a way to split the atom, and because of this they have made atomic bombs, which they have used already, referring to the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan, which had occurred recently. Usually the inner world folk stay out of humanity's barbaric affairs, they do not interfere, but when humanity began to tamper with the atom, they had to step in. The man explains that emissaries were sent from this inner world to the leaders of the surface world. It is not stated who these were. In 1945, the inner world folk sent their emissaries in Flugelrads, the name for their flying machines, and these were fired upon, and the powers that be on the surface world would not listen to their warnings. Our culture and science is many thousands of years beyond your race, Admiral, said the Elder. Your race has not reached the point of no return, but there are those among you who would destroy your very world, rather than relinquish their power as they know it. Bird listened intently as the man continued. A great storm is gathering in your world, a black fury that will not spend itself for many years. There will be no answer in your weapons, there will be no safety in your science. It may rage on until every flower of your culture is trampled, and all human things are levelled in vast chaos. He warned that this has happened before, in the ancient past, a time that became known as the Dark Ages. These Dark Ages were returning, he forewarned, and only some of the human race would survive through this storm. 
The old man predicted that he foresaw a new world stirring from the ruins of the human race, seeking its lost legends and treasures, and they will be here, my son, safe in our keeping. What could he mean by this? The host states that when the time comes, his people will act to help revive the surface people's culture, and he hopes that humanity will then have learnt the futility of war, and instead work on living peacefully in an age of appreciation and respect. This was the message that Admiral Byrd was to take back to his superiors. Byrd was returned to his plane where his radio man Howie awaited him. They boarded and the plane was again put into the invisible vice grip, which transported them out of the city and back to the mountain range. As they crossed the mountains, the plane's controls were returned to Byrd, and he soon found himself back over the ice. Byrd attended a meeting at the Pentagon, where he gave a report about all that had happened to him. He was interviewed at length by top security officials, which he found to be quite an ordeal. At the end of this, to his dismay and anger, Admiral Byrd was ordered to remain silent with regard to all that had happened to him and everything that he had learned. He was told to keep quiet by the powers that be. Byrd felt that this went against his moral principles, and in 1956 he decided that it could not be kept secret any longer, and he released his diaries. But they mysteriously disappeared, only to be found again 17 years later in the archives of the Byrd family records. It is debated as to whether these lost diaries of Admiral Byrd are genuine, and whether what was described actually happened to him, or if it was some kind of hallucination, brought on perhaps by carbon monoxide poisoning. Once again we have a tale of other civilizations warning humanity of the destructive path we are following, as we continue to war against each other and make weapons that will not just destroy countries, but possibly the planet itself. Nuclear proliferation and the arms race is a dangerous game which could well lead to the demise of humankind. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Did Admiral Byrd really meet an underground race of advanced beings? Or was the whole thing simply a bizarre dream and all in his mind?